I'm going to show you how to answer this question for sampling activity number one. So I've already taken my whoops sampling tool and I dragged it over here into the community. And now I'm going to answer question number one. Question number one says, what is in your sample? So all that I have to do right here is I have to look inside of this box and count up and describe each of the shapes that's in there. So I can see that we have two pink squares, one yellow square, and I have two orange squares. Second question, this is where it gets a little bit challenging. Um, second question says, based on your sample, what do you think a community that contains 100 specimens would look like? So here's where we're gonna have to do a little bit of math and I left some space below my slide for me to do this. The first thing that we need to do is we need to count up every single shape inside of our sample. In my shape, or in my sample, I have one, two, three, four, five different shapes. So I'm gonna have a, uh, a total of five shapes. That's gonna be important when we later on work on our different fractions. The first thing that I wanna figure out is how many pink squares I would have in a population of 100 based only off of this sample. So in my sample, I have two pink squares out of a total of five shapes. So that's gonna give me a sample of two fifths pink squares. Some of you might be really good at uh, fractions and converting them into percents in your head, but I'm gonna show you how to do it um, all the way out. So to get from two fifths to a percent, the first thing we have to do is convert that to a decimal. So you can do it on your calculator if you want to, but we're just gonna do two divided by five, and we're gonna find that that tells us that the answer is 0 0.4. In order to convert to a percent, what you do is you take your decimal and you move it to the right two places. So we're gonna move it once, move it twice, and it goes right here. So two fifths is another way of saying 40%. 40% means that in a group of 100, there will be 40 of this thing. So what I can say is that since my sample is two-fifths pink squares, and that is that means it's 40% pink squares, that in a sample of 100, I will have 40 pink squares. Let's move on and talk about the yellow square. I have one yellow square in my sample. And I have, again, a total of five different shapes. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. So one out of my five shapes is yellow. We're going to do that same math where we're going to first convert our fraction to a decimal. So I can say one divided by five equals 0 0.2. Now I need to convert this decimal into a percent. I'm going to move it twice to the right and that means that it is 20%. Now I know that if I have a sample of 100, that 20 of them will be yellow squares. Because 1 fifth is 20%, and in a group of 100, 20% means that there will be 20 yellow squares. We can do this exact same thing now for our orange squares. So for our orange squares, Right up here, I see that we have, again, two of them. So two out of the five are orange. We're gonna convert this first to a decimal. You are welcome to do that on your calculator. So two fifths is equal to 0 0.4. We need to convert that to a percentage now. So we move the decimal over twice. That gives us 40%. And since we're dealing with a population of 100, we know that that would be 40% orange squares. Now we can kind of do one last check with our math. So earlier I said that we would have 40, oops, let's make that bigger, 40 pink squares. We just said we would have 40 orange squares. And lastly, we said that we would have 40, or sorry, 20 yellow squares. And if we add 40 plus 40 plus 20, that's going to give us a total of 100. Now, there is a problem with this sample because this sample 
says that we're going to have 40 pink squares, 40 orange squares, and 20 yellow squares, and nothing else. But when we look at our population up here, we can see we have green circles, we have blue squares, we have a pink circle. All of that is not accounted for because our sample simply isn't large enough. If you understand this, go ahead and stop the video here and head back to your um, worksheet and you can finish that up. If you're still a little bit confused, keep watching. I'm gonna walk you through another scenario. So here we are with sample number two. I went ahead and uh, skipped some of the counting steps just to speed things up a little bit. And once again, I took my sampling tool and I dragged it over the community and I placed it right here. I already took care of the counting and I found that we have 14 pink squares, one orange square, four blue squares, four green circles, and two yellow squares. If you add these up, it gives you a total of 25 shapes. So we're gonna go ahead and figure out um, the same percents again, uh, but this time instead of dividing everything by five, we're gonna go ahead and divide it by 25. So let's start with the 14 squares. So we have 14 pink squares out of a total of 25. That means that 14 out of the 25 um, shapes in my sample are pink squares. When I do 14 divided by 25 on a calculator, that gives me a total of 0 0.56. Now I have to convert this to a percent move the decimal twice, gives me 56%. And as we learned in this situation, that means that in our total of 100, 56 will be pink squares. Let's try the one orange square. So in my population, I have one orange square out of a total of 25. I can rewrite that as one divided by 25. And when I do that on a calculator, I see that that gives me an answer of 0 0.04. Now I need to convert this into a decimal. I'm going to move my decimal over twice, and that's going to give me 4%. Once again, because we're working with a, a population of 100, this tells me that there are going to be four orange squares. Okay, let's try it with the blue squares now. So I have four blue squares out of a total of 25 shapes in my sample. I can rewrite that as four divided by 25. And when I do that on a calculator, I get an answer of 0 0.16. Convert it into a percent by moving the decimal over two places and that gives me 16%. Once again, we're working with a population of 100, so this tells me that 16% means that I have 16 blue squares. The green circles, it's exactly the same. It's four, so I'm not gonna redo that math. I'm just gonna drag that right down here. 16 green circles. And then lastly, two yellow squares. 2 out of 25 shapes can go to 2 divided by 25. When I do the math for that, I get an answer of 0 0.08. Move the decimal over two times, 8%. And now I know that I will have 8 yellow squares. So when we look at these numbers, uh, this is what our answer would be. We would have 56 pink squares, 4 orange, 16 green, and 8 yellow squares. When I look at this, there's something that immediately stands out to me as that is an overestimate. When I look at this number right here, I see 16 green circles. That's a lot more circles than we have in our population. So that could be considered an overestimation. It also only shows that we would have four orange squares. Now that's pretty close, but it is also a little bit of an underestimation. And so this again is kind of where we can see 
some of the issues that can come with not taking a large enough sample or not taking a sample enough times. However, this one, sample two, it's a much larger uh, sampling space than sample one was. And so we can definitely see that sample two does give us a more accurate picture of the population as a whole than sample one does. If you still have questions about this, please stop by tutoring and I am more than happy to help you out and talk to you about this. We are gonna continue talking about sampling in class a little bit, but by this point, I hope that you have at least a decent understanding of how the size of a sample can impact its accuracy.